Hi and welcome to today's video in which I sum up the very basic document in IFRS conceptual framework as issued in 2018. I'm Sylvia of IFRSbox.com, the place to be if you want to understand and apply IFRS easily. I have created the IFRS Kit, a comprehensive IFRS learning platform for you, plus lots of free materials, so you're welcome to check them out at IFRSbox.com. Well, in 1989, the framework for the preparation and presentation of the financial statements was issued. But then International Accounting Standards Board made amendments to it and the new, although unfinished, framework was issued in September 2010 with a new name, the Conceptual Framework for Financial Reporting. And it stayed in progress for many years and then in March 2018 the final version was issued with everything completed, so let's take a look. Well, the new framework has eight chapters in total, and here's the list, and we will take a closer view at each chapter. So the first one is about the objective of general purpose financial reporting, which is to provide financial information about the reporting entity that is useful to existing and potential investors, lenders, and other creditors to make various decisions. For example, about trading with equity and debt instruments, providing loans, and so on. So what financial information shall be reported in the general purpose reports? Well, note that we are not talking about the financial statements yet, because they are subject to chapter 3. So the entity shall present the information about its economic resources and claims, which is basically a financial position. Then changes in economic resources and claims resulting from entity's financial performance and from other events. Well, financial performance shall be reflected by the accrual accounting, so in the periods when the effects of the transactions occur, regardless the related cash flows. However, information about past cash flows is very important to assess management's ability to generate future cash flows. Chapter 2 discusses qualitative characteristics of the financial information so that the information is really useful for its users. And there are two types of characteristics, fundamental and enhancing. The first fundamental characteristic is relevance. So relevant financial information is capable of making a difference in the decisions made by the users. And here the concept of materiality applies, so the material information should not be omitted. And the second fundamental characteristic is faithful representation. And financial information must not only be relevant, but must faithfully represent what it aims to represent. So therefore it must be complete, neutral and free from error. And financial information shall have both fundamental characteristics. Enhancing characteristics are comparability, so information should be comparable between different entities or time periods. Then verifiability, independent and knowledgeable observers are able to verify the information. Timeliness, information is available in time to influence the decisions of users. And understandability. So the information shall be classified, presented clearly and concisely. And enhancing characteristics shall be applied to the maximum possible extent. Chapter 3 is about the financial statements and the reporting entity. So here we are focusing on the financial statements, not just the reporting itself. So the relevant information is provided in the statement of financial position by recognizing assets, liabilities and equity in the statement of financial performance by recognizing income and expenses and in other statements where you show the information about recognized and unrecognized assets and other elements of the financial statements, cash flows, contributions from and distributions to shareholders, assumptions, methods used, judgments applied, estimates and other relevant information. Financial reports are always prepared for a specified period of time or the reporting period and going concern assumption applies. Well, it means that an entity will continue its operations in the foreseeable future and will not liquidate or materially curtail operations. Well, if you're not a going concern, then you should report under different bases and you can check out ifrsbox.com. I have one Q&A session where I answer specifically how to report when you're not going concern. 
Okay, then chapter three speaks about the concept of a reporting entity. And that is an entity that must or chooses to prepare financial statements. And this entity can be single entity, one company, or even a portion of an entity, for example, some division of one company, or more than one entities, for example, parent and its subsidiary. As a result, we have few types of financial statements. Consolidated, where parent and subsidiary provide information as a single reporting entity. Unconsolidated, where parent alone provides the financial information. And even combined financial statements if a reporting entity comprises two or more entities not linked by parent-subsidiary relationship. Chapter 4 is about elements of the financial statements and they can relate to the financial position. Here we have assets, liabilities and equity. And another elements relate to financial performance and these are income and expenses. And then the framework defines each element and provides examples. It is very extensive chapter full of details and lays good foundation to build upon. So if you'd like to learn more about it, then please check out ifrsbox.com. Chapter 5 is about recognition and derecognition. Recognition means inclusion of an element into financial statements when it meets the definition. And it links the elements in the statement of financial position and the statement of financial performance as follows. Well, in the statement of financial position at the beginning and at the end of the reporting period, assets minus liabilities equal equity. And we have also income minus expenses recognized in the statement of financial performance and contributions from and distributions to holders of equity. And these two items are recognized changes during the period. Derecognition is the removal of all or part of recognized asset or liability from entity statement of financial position and framework sets a number of criteria for both recognition and derecognition. Chapter 6 talks about the measurement. So while recognition means when or whether to recognize, measurement means in what amount to recognize, more specifically the selection of a measurement basis well, which is the way of measuring monetary amount for elements of financial statements. And the framework discusses two basic measurement bases, which is historical cost, that's basically the transaction price at the time of recognition of the element. And the second one is current value, which measures the element updated to reflect the conditions at measurement date. And here it includes fair value, value in use and current cost. Framework then discusses many factors to consider when you're selecting the appropriate measurement basis. And the most important is to make sure that the financial information is relevant and provides faithful representation of the financial performance and position. Well, but there are also factors specific to initial recognition, enhancing characteristics and other that are discussed by the framework in detail. Chapter 7 is about the presentation and disclosure. So presentation and disclosure are communication tools. And in order to make the communication effective, it requires focusing on presentation and disclosure objectives and principles, not the rules. And then classifying the information so that similar items are grouped and dissimilar ones are separated. And here the framework speaks about offsetting, classification of equity, income and expenses and other items. And finally, aggregating information, but need to prevent too many unnecessary details and also the opposite extreme, over aggregation. And then all these concepts are discussed in detail. Finally, chapter number eight is about concepts of capital and capital maintenance. And it is essentially copied from previous version of framework, so nothing new here. Well, framework explains two concepts of capital. Financial capital is synonymous with the net assets of equity of the entity. And under the financial capital maintenance concept, the profit is earned only when the amount of net assets at the end of the period is greater than the amount of net assets in the beginning after excluding contributions and distributions with equity holders. And this financial capital maintenance can be measured either in some nominal monetary units or units of constant purchasing power. 
physical capital is regarded as the productive capacity of the entity based on, for example, units of output per day. And here the profit is earned when a physical productive capacity increases during the period, of course, after excluding the movements with equity holders. And the main difference between these concepts is how the entity treats the effect of changes in prices of assets and liabilities. So that was the short summary of the new conceptual framework as issued in 2018. And if you need to learn more, you're very welcome to check ifrsbox.com. Thanks for watching.